Okay, this video is part four of Is Psychiatry a Joke? And the emphasis is going to be on this guy right here, Robert Whitaker. This is Robert Whitaker. I got a copy of his book. It's a very good book. I quickly enjoy reading that cover to cover. Um, and this lecture right here, and I've got it. I'll put the link below in the description. Uh, ADHD, Changing the Child Instead of the Environment. And this is the YouTube channel that's on there. Um, he basically was talking about the fact they just invented ADHD in 1980. And... It just created a giant new market for selling drugs. And this guy was the leader of the push to get the drugs in place, a guy named Biederman over at Harvard. And he was made chief of research, psychopharmacology at Harvard, big distinguished guy at Harvard, wrote over 600 papers or was a part author of all these papers. And what he was listed as one of the most number one percent uh, psychiatrist for a number of citations in the research literature, like he's some type of big hero. Let me tell you the truth about this guy. He's a scumbag, okay? He promoted selling amphetamines to children, as well as antipsychotics to children. And um, Robert Whitaker points out the more drugs you give these kids, long and the longer you keep them on these drugs, the worse the long-term outcomes in these kids. They have crappy outcomes. You turn them into psychiatric patients, okay? Whitaker says, there's no proof that ADHD even exists. Typically what happens is the kid annoys the teacher and the kid gets then put on these drugs. And that is how bad the public school system is now. You send your kid to school, hopefully he's going to learn something, and they label him an attention deficit and then they drug the kid. He gets a side effect. They go, oh, well, he's more than attention deficit. He's bipolar. Give him this drug. He's psychotic. Give him another drug. It's insane. Do you realize how crazy this is? Nowadays, too, in the public schools, they're castrating children. Do you understand that? This is insane. It's, it's beyond crazy, okay? As Thomas Shaw says, to give psychiatric medications to a kid, it's not treatment, it's poison, okay? Um, all these, you know, things that they promote in psychiatry are fake and bogus. The idea that there's only one synapse a one neurotransmitter at a synapse, okay? There's other modulators that are routinely involved. The idea that you can just take a drug and treat, treat the synapses that you want to treat for that one neurotransmitter, that's a fantasy. I'll show some drawings here, but they're, you know, it's routine for a, a, a neuron to have 1,000 or more inputs. This idea of a simple, you know, one synapse, one neurotransmitter, that's good for teaching, but it's much more complicated in real life. Um, if somebody were to sell amphetamine, you know, on a street corner from one adult to another, that would be illegal. But with these, you know, atheistic jerks at Harvard, they make it legal to sell amphetamines to a child. Okay, that's insane. And people need to speak up. You should not respect them. The Harvard doctors do not deserve your respect. They are evil and bad. I am telling you that. Their pediatric psychiatrists are evil and bad. They do not deserve your respect. You endanger a child when you put them in front of these people, okay? They're paid to sell drugs. And this guy, Biederman, I think, you know, is a classic example. The more he drugs he sells to kids, the bigger a celebrity he becomes. Like I said, Harvard made him chief of the department. They wrote this big, you know, laudatory uh, elegy when he died. He died last January 2023. And what an evil guy this was. He, he devoted his life to selling as many possible drugs to kids. He was investigated for receiving uh, over a million dollars from these different drug companies. He was getting money in one form or another from over 24 drug companies. This is a total conflict of interest, okay? And as Whitaker says, the more drugs they give them, the longer they keep the kid on them, the worse the prognosis. I'll show you a little bit about how it all works here. Okay, now here is, here's this Biederman guy, and he's called the father of pediatric psychopharmacology. How about a scumbag who deals drugs to children, an evil scumbag, okay? And then this is all the, you know, and of course, you know, despite all this, Harvard kept him on. Yeah, because he's bringing in millions and millions of dollars, 40-fold increase in, uh, you know, American kids getting labeled as having bipolar after his paper, uh, you know, claimed that that was a legitimate diagnosis. He basically made it respectable to sell amphetamines, antipsychotics, and other very powerful drugs to children. So he created all these markets, you know. And that's why I tell these people, you know, all these stupid people, you think you think the, the healthcare system is your friend. No, it hates your gut. You're just a peasant, surf, useless eater, and they want to get as much money as they can. They don't even care if you die. In Canada now, the Canada is a little bit far ahead of the United States. they got something called MAID. That's like medical assistance in dying. And they're letting, you know, 
kids, children commit suicide. They go, sure, sure, sure. Suicide's reasonable. And, and they have medical assisted suicide for children. It's insane. Do you get this? This is an attempt, you know, to depopulate, okay, to lower the population numbers. Do you get this? Okay. Do not think they are your friend. They are not your friend. It's an important thing in life to know who your friend is and who your who's not your friend, okay? Somebody who does this to children is not a friend of mankind, all right? All right, so here's a typical neuron. Here's a cell body up here where the nucleus is. These are the dendrites. They receive the incoming signals. If the cell becomes activated, it'll fire an action potential, travels from the axon hillock at the beginning of the axon down to the axon terminal, the synaptic terminal. Neurotransmitter then will travel from the cytoplasm to the synaptic cleft, release its neurotransmitter that'll exert an effect on the postsynaptic neuron. That's a standard you know, way to show a simplified uh, diagram of a neuron. Okay, here's a little bit of how it works in real life. You have here, let's say, a serotonin synapse. The signal comes in, the neurotransmitter vesicle merges with the plasma membrane, releases its neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. These little green circles are the neurotransmitter. They do, this will be serotonin in this case. It diffuses across the synaptic cleft, binds to the serotonin receptor on the postsynaptic neuron, exerts an effect. Okay. Then the neurotransmitter is cleared from the synapse by reuptake. Okay. So the reuptake transporter will take it back into the uh, presynaptic neuron and it can be repackaged into a synaptic vesicle. All right, so now let's say you give one of these medications like an SSRI, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitor. That would be like things like Prozac, sertraline, there's a whole bunch of other similar ones, trazodone, etc. Okay, so anyways, this will block the reuptake of the neurotransmitter. So you'll get an increased amount of neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. Now, theoretically, you say, well, shouldn't that increase the effect? And serotonin improves mood, so shouldn't that be a good thing? But it's way more complicated than that. And what you're doing now, and Whitaker points this out, you, you, you don't just have a little bit more. You don't know how much more you have, and you have an abnormally high concentration accumulating within the synapse. Okay, So that's pathologic. That's actually not physiologic, and it's not even a real treatment. What happens now is these neurons will make compensatory adaptations. For example, the postsynaptic neuron, let's say it previously had one, two, three, four, five receptors. Maybe it'll downregulate and only have one receptor for the serotonin. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to fight the drug, okay? And then the presynaptic membrane, and previously only had, we drew one in this case here, reuptake transporter for the serotonin. Now it might, you know, produce more of them and have one, two, three, four of them, okay? So even though some are blocked, you're still taking that transmitter out of the cleft. And it might produce fewer synaptic vesicles. The neuron's, try, the neuron's trying to fight this abnormal drug effect, okay? So you're now changing things in a way that's not, a normal thing to do and you might have a hard time ever coming back to normal and this distortion of synaptic function can lead to it becoming very difficult to withdraw the patient off these medicines okay Bregan was kind of famous for working out ways to get uh, better results with withdrawing medicines from these psych drugs okay so now here what I'm showing you is a little bit more about the complexity of a synapse it's not just let's say glutamate going to the postsynaptic neuron a lot of times there's a whole bunch of modulating synapses. It's more like a complex orchestra, a symphony. So you can't just uh, handle this with one drug. And now it's been shown over and over again that this whole serotonin thing was a big bogus lie. And now a big push amongst psychiatrists. Oh, we're going to try to modify glutamate. Yeah, good luck. Is that another stupid idea or what? There's more than 90% of the brain neurotransmitter. You're going to try affecting some, some disease with that. You're going to be messing with neurons all over the brain. It's so stupid that it wouldn't even be done at all except for the fact that there's big money in it. It's big money in it and psych patients are considered a bunch of low lowlifes with no, no voice for themselves to defend themselves or protect themselves. Okay, so here's Peter Bragg and this is a great book. It's the best book written on the problems with uh, neuropsychopharmacology, pregnancy disabling treatments in psychiatry is the name of the book. This guy was a brilliant Harvard uh, psychiatrist guy whose heart was in the right place and he really tried to help people. So he basically says that every, virtually every psych medicine causes a chemical lobotomy because they cause brain damage that decreases cognitive function. So that's the joke about psychiatry, you know. You walk into a psychiatrist's office. Uh, Bregan said it's one of the most dangerous things you could do is walk into the office of a psychiatrist. They're almost for sure going to give you a drug. And he said almost all psychiatric drugs produce a gradually progressive chemical lobotomy. All right. 
he says, and if the, and if the drug is, is having really bad side effects, what are they going to do? They'll send you for a surgical lobotomy or an electrical lobotomy, electroconvulsive therapy. And I've seen now they're doing more of these surgical procedures, putting electrodes in the people's brain. It's insane. It's crazy. Now, we don't have time to get into all that stuff, food and mood and, and psychology and religion. That'll be a topic for another day. But I just wanted you to see this, okay? And Whitaker's book, it's quite good. Whitaker's got a bunch of lectures online. Like I said, I'll put the link for one of them below. But he's got a whole bunch of them. They're very good. He's a very bright guy. Uh, what are some of the other things he pointed out? Oh, patients from multi, uh, major uh, depressive disorder used to do very well. They usually have one episode and they'd recover, like over 80% of them. Um and he says, now, once you put them on the drugs, they're much more likely to not get better and to end up being a chronic uh, psychiatric patient for their entire life. The drugs had incredibly bad results for treatment of depression. You'd be amazed how bad the results are for antidepressant drugs, how many side effects there are, and terrible side effects. Um, okay, there's, a, there's plenty of other good ones out there. We'll talk about them in some other future lecture but uh, Whitaker is good. I don't know if I got any more slides for today on this one. Oh, what's the future of psychiatry? Like I said, they used to they used to do insulin comas, like an endocrine lobotomy. They used to do full, you know, these full extensive surgical lobotomies, like uh, Rose Kennedy, Randall McMurphy, and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. The whole thing is crazy. It's so bad. And like I said. That's why people say, oh, I want medicine to be based on science. And they think that's an intelligent thing to say. The truth of the matter is if you don't have a biblical worldview where man is created in the image of God, he just becomes a talking monkey with no rights and he gets exploited. And almost everything you hear about in science is really just advertising. It's just advertising to make money. And that's why medicine could never reform itself unless it has Christian ethics. And I, I say this based on over 30 years in the business and growing up with, you know, doctor parents and around other doctors all the time. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, you know, I want to help people and I know the, B, the BS that's going on. So anyways, I uh, hope that was helpful. I'll have the link below to his lecture.